probably. We gave Fuck you that. extra so we could burn all of them away. Don't worry about it. Yeah, but you have a guy in the palace who can get this done in like a month, so let's go. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> no, that would make us obsolete. Shut up. Right. And this will also help keep the headaches away, too. Because all that's really required is just a little bit of instruction from an actual no-shit wizard. No need for the Radahan. No need for any of this, really, as long as there's a wizard present. Yeah, just like a little bit of help every once in a while, like siphon off some of that bullshit, and then he can keep going. He also explains that it's important. See, Nathan is explaining a lot. That's why I had the little (laughs) pre-text thing, because it's like, it's just a lot of him talking. He also explains that it's important for Richard to only receive help if he actually needs it. Therefore... Richard can't just, like, become bunk mates and they can get this done fast, which is kind of where I thought it was going to go the first time I read the book. Like, oh, well, they're going to be buddies and he's going to, like, just teach him the way and it can't actually work like that. Yeah. He needs to, like, figure it out on his own, basically, because for most of the time. yeah, Because it's an instinct thing, right? It has to come to him instinctually, otherwise it kind of doesn't count. You can't just keep poking him and hoping that it'll do something, because it it just won't work that way. He has to organically come to it. Hey, do the thing. (laughs) Do it again. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, he also explains that it's, I mean, it's just going to take a long time. You only just learned how to ride, and it's going to take a long time for you to ride gracefully. Yeah, I thought it was a little bit funny, though, because he was like, Yeah, this will help keep the headaches away, which was the main question Richard was asking. But it'll still take a long time for you to learn how to be a wizard. And (laughs) Richard didn't say shit, but I, if I were Richard, would be like, I didn't want to. I told everybody repeatedly, I don't want to be a fucking wizard. I literally just want the headaches to go away and not kill me. So, cool. Yeah, so get me to that point, and then let's call it a day. Yeah. Let's chop this shit off, okay? Cool. (laughs) Finally, Nathan tells Richard... The wizard's second rule. He had been wondering about this, but finally it was time to, like, reveal it. In case you haven't figured it out. And Jade and I, now granted, we knew beforehand, but I think during the course of this book so far, we've seen a lot of different examples of it playing out and them not drawing attention to it. And I'm pretty sure that was on purpose by Terry. Yeah, putting it in your face without mentioning that we're putting it in your face type of thing. Right. Did you figure it out? Did you know by the end of the book what it was? If you were paying attention, I feel like you did. Yeah. And I mean, I got it. So yeah, I was paying attention. Yeah, especially going through the book in this way. You can like open it up a little bit more and be like, okay, so when you did this good thing, it was actually not a good thing. (laughs) Right. Not at all. (laughs) So... Finally, Nathan tells Richard what the wizard's second rule is. The greatest harm can come from the best intentions. He gives Richard a couple of pretty extreme examples, like pointing out that once you help somebody, they won't help themselves anymore. And then if you give a beggar some money, he might murder his family. (laughs) Yeah. Now, those might not be your fault, but if you had done something a little bit differently... It wouldn't have happened. So, I mean, it is a little your fault. It's kind of your fault. (laughs) Now, I understand that this is true because it's literally a rule regarding things you didn't plan on happening. You were trying to be good, which is not a bad thing. But even you trying to be good and doing a good thing can sometimes have negative consequences. And that's not necessarily the fault of the person that does it, because that's what's so tricky about it. You don't always know if you're, like, violating that rule or if you're really doing the right thing. Yeah, it's really tricky. And Richard admits that he thinks he tore the veil by violating the second rule. Like, twice in a week, actually, this has been. Uh, And Nathan confirms that, yeah, he did. But, on the upside, he's also the only one who could put the Stone of Tears back on the Keeper. So, there's that. Yeah. You're also the only guy who can fix it, so (laughs) don't worry too much. Like, worry. Worry. We should all be pretty worried. (laughs) Uh, But you're the only guy who can fix it. Don't beat yourself up. Specifically with your sword. Do you want me to thicken that for you? (laughs) Would that be a good idea? I think so. 
turn the sword of truth into a war hammer, then then your chances are pretty thick, I would say. <laughs> and the wizard second rule is it's tricky also because like, okay, Richard tore the veil by using the second rule because he was committing the greatest harm by trying to save the world when he tore the veil, right? Like his in- good intention was trying to save the world, but he tore the veil. That was the, the greatest harm part of it, right? Yes, I believe so. But that wasn't his fault because otherwise we would all be dead. Like, Well, I mean, somebody else put all of that into motion. So if you really think about it, I think, no, none of it is Richard's fault. Yeah. But it's his responsibility. Yeah. I don't know. It just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what gets you about it. So when Richard brings up the prophecy about the one in white, Nathan confirms that it is, in fact, about Kaylin and she will be beheaded. If Richard tries to stop it, especially using magic, it will be effectively letting the keeper out. So that's not a great move. <laughs> Let's not do that. Yeah, like, I mean, she's a cool chick and all that, but, like, all life, man. <laughs> all of it, you know? We all like tits, but, like, all life, man. <laughs> <laughs> just, Just think about that. A lot of tits out there. Anyway, I hope you choose, you know, to do the right thing. <laughs> Make glad, the right move. Glad we had this talk. <laughs> so there's a commotion outside, and Richard sees a man in baggy clothes surrounded by about a hundred guards. He recognizes the man as a Bakaban Mana blade master, and then he goes to him. Jion, which I fucking love his name, I hate the way it's spelled. I spelled it differently in the notes, and I don't feel bad about that. <laughs> it looks cooler that way. Well, it helped me remember how it's pronounced, but yeah, it does. It kind of looks cooler, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, we do a lot of our notes that way. They're spelled, like, if you guys see our notes on our, our future website. That's right. Don't ever judge us for misspellings, because a lot of them are literally for pronunciations. Um... For pronunciation's sake. That's, yes. That's, <laughs> <Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jion reports that they have made peace with the Majindai. Du Chailu is going to keep the baby, and that the Bakaban Mana are ready to be led to their promised land. Holy shit, that's a lot. Like, you guys know I'm over here doing some stuff, right? <laughs> You've n- literally never been able to get one of the magic men back out of the palace in all the time you've known that this was the situation. Never. So, like, I can't go with you because I'm kind of stuck here. Well, you, you're married to our lady now, so yeah, and get your ass back here. Richard does make that mistake, too. He's like, hey, your people, I'm, I'm glad for your people. And he's like, you mean your people because <laughs> you are our people, son. <laughs> <laughs> we claimed you. Right. <laughs> and Richard is very quickly like, yeah, 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 uh, real soon, guys. Not a problem. We're going to. Take care of that. Even though, like we had just pointed out, he has no idea how long it'll be. For all he knows, it's going to be another three, four hundred years. I feel like he made a point to say that, though, out loud in front of a large gathering of people. Because it's not just the guards. It's not just this dude. There's a lot of sisters that are standing around him, too, like his teachers. And so he's like, it's not going to be that long. Yeah. I'll be out in a week. Wink. <laughs> What it's actually something because we had talked on previous episodes about what happens when a wizard makes a promise. Now we know for sure he is a wizard. He's a fucking war wizard. Hell yes. So that's not in question anymore. Yeah. And we know that wizards make promises. Sometimes they make promises they don't intend on making and accidentally somehow come across to like, Make sure that that promise is kept later, even though, again, they never plan to do it. It's happened. I know it's confusing, but it's happened. <laughs> so this is Richard saying, yeah, it's, it won't be long. I promise. Yeah. So just foreshadowing. It's going to happen. Just foreshadowing all over the place. <laughs> also another one of those, like, try me, guys. Guess yeah. what? <laughs> Guess what's going to happen? I'm going to leave soon. And they're probably like, okay, Richard. Okay. <laughs> So he tells the guards to let the man leave since he came in here without killing anybody. So let's let him leave without killing anybody. And like they do. That's fine. Just on his word. Strange man, Blade Master, who we know is very, very dangerous. And they're just like, yeah, no, it's fine because he said so. 
They know Richard, so you vouch for him. Cool. The guard. These are all his friends. Yeah, these he pays are for all them to get buddies. laid. That and it was like it was a joke when Anne told him. So you run the place now, and apparently, mm-hmm. yeah, he's got some pull. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but the chapter ends with Richard feeling distraught that literally everything happening right now is his fault. He had violated the wizard's second rule twice in a day, which again. Didn't mean to do, but did. Yeah, happened. And it's like, it's a law of hindsight. You have to know it happened after it happened, unfortunately, but that's how you learn. And now, if he doesn't escape, Kalen is definitely going to die on the winter solstice. It's in prophecy. He has seen it. Multiple people have seen it. Although now he's, like, trying to spin the, like, what prophecy is. He's like, I just got to save her. That's what prophecy is. It just means I got to save her. I just, uh, it, it's a warning. I got to get there first. No, uh, pro- pretty sure prophecy is what's going to happen, <laughs> though, Richard. Like, it's it's like, it's prophesized. It's going to happen. Nope. Nope. I just, I got to get there first. That's what it is. I love how Richard took on this kind of Southern draw a little <laughs> bit there. That was awesome. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I just got to save it. I just got to get there. <laughs> So he resolves himself to find the only person that can help now. And that is dot, dot, dot. I don't know. Right. Another cliffhanger. End of chapter. Damn. (laughs) Tune in next week for probably not the answers you're looking for. (laughs) Oh, no. Is it another chapter jump? I have no idea. I didn't even look ahead. I just... Based on my experience. That's probably what's going to happen. We'll we'll see. (laughs) It wouldn't surprise me. Maybe we will be eating our word on Wednesday, but I don't know. I'm confident in you. I'm confident that this is the way it's going to work out. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, if you guys are confident that you enjoyed this episode, Uh yeah, (laughs) I got a little practice in over the break. (laughs) You can let us know by writing an email to podcastatt at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Podcast ATT. If you wanted to do something a little more personal, you can send us a text or you can leave us a voicemail at 616-259-0025. And if you wanted to help our humble little podcast grow, you can go to patreon.com slash podcast ATT and make a pledge there. We sure the hell appreciate it. And we love seeing you guys there. So thank you guys so much for listening we will see you real soon (laughs) bye 2021